problem here. Um, it's a basic number theory result that relates the number of divisors of any natural number to its prime factorization. And uh, I just started out with this concrete example, 90, and it has a prime representation uh, given by the fundamental theorem of arithmetic, two to the first times three squared times five to the first power. And you can check this out. This would be nine, two times nine is 18, and five times 18 is 90. Now, what I'm doing here is actually running through each of the possible divisors. Of course, 90 is a divisor of itself, so I just recopied this, right? Two to the first, three squared, uh, five to the first. But notice that we get another divisor, 45, simply by letting the exponent here be zero for two. So two to the zero is one. You'd have nine times five is 45. In a similar fashion, as you adjust these exponents, um, you're going to get all of the divisors here. You can, you can see them listed here. There's 12 of them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 of them. But notice that the key thing to this that I hadn't really thought of much is that you have to allow for exponents to be equal to zero because that, in fact, one, if you, if you didn't let all the exponents equal to zero, then one wouldn't be a divisor. We know that would be no good. That'd be bankrupt. But all these other smaller divisors happen when you just set every one of the exponents equal to zero except one in the case two to the first times three to the zero times three to zero. So the net takeaway from this is you have to also consider zero being a, an allowable exponent. Now that leads to this. And by the way, folks, this is this is a, a product notation. If you're interested, right over here, R would be three. There's three prime numbers, one, two, three prime numbers. And so this would be a product notation form for this. Uh, not a summation notation, R would be equal to three. Now let's, so what do we just learn here? We know that there's 12 divisors for a fact. We, we've exhaustively listed them. Now let's go to the next screen. Now keep in mind, you have one, two, one right here, right? So notice that the number of divisors, the one, the two, and the one, you just add one and you, you're adding one each time to account for the fact that zero is a possibility. And so just by adding one to each of these exponents and then taking the product of that result, you get the 12 that you saw. We, I mean, we physically saw the 12 divisors, but this is the so, so-called easy way to do it. Just take the exponents in the prime factorization and increment by one then multiply that product together. Now, this is the product notation for that result. In other words, uh, the k sub i's, let's go back. The, the, these k sub i's, folks, are just simply the exponents right here, okay? Just simply the exponents. So the, the, it's a, the number of divisors is a function of the exponents. It has nothing to do with the prime numbers themselves, which is interesting, all right? Um, now, I guess it's not interesting, but it, you, these could be any, like, for example, if this had been 7 to the first power, 11 to the second power and 13 to the first, you would still have 12 divisors despite the changes in the magnitudes of the prime numbers. Okay. All right. So anyway, we've got this far. And now I want to go through a concrete problem here where I would presented this before and, and I didn't present a solution. But what I'm looking for here is a unique positive integer uh, that satisfies three conditions. Now, the first condition is it has to be a perfect square. Now, just uh, let me let me let me do that with you real quick. Uh, I think you all see that, but uh, it, it turns out a perfect square by laws of exponents, all of the exponents in the prime factorization have to be even. Let, let me just do a quick example of that. Um, okay, so let's say we have uh, we know that thirty six here. Okay, thirty six is certainly a perfect square, right? Thirty six is equal to uh, six times six, right? Little dot there, it's supposed to be a dot, folks. Sorry, that's six times six, okay? But notice this would be equal to uh, two squared. Okay, and y'all, I'm trying to connote multiplication with this little dot here. Two squared times, uh, three squared, right? So that's on uh, any perfect square is guaranteed. You see six is two times three, right? 
So it's happening twice. So you would have two squared right here, two squared times three squared, right? So uh, th that's this observation that a natural number is a perfect square if and only if all it are, are even, all, all, the, all the exponents. See, so all the exponents in the prime factorization have to be even. Now that's something everybody, you, you would believe without me having to go through the proof of it, but that it's an if and only if condition. You can only be a perfect square if all of your, uh, all of the exponents in the prime factorization are even. Otherwise, you'd be violating just the laws of exponents. Okay, so uh, that the number has to be a perfect square. It has to have, now this is unusual looking, 45 divisors, right? Okay, wow, all right. And you would think maybe that would be enough information, but it's far from enough. You actually, as far as I know, you have to give, you have to be specific because any number of primes could have the same number of divisors, you know, if you know what I mean. So you have to actually get, um, you have to actually put a specific concrete value in there. So there's three conditions. It also has to be divisible by 5145. And I wrote down the prime factorization for you guys. That's three times five times seven cubed for that one. All right. Now, so uh, that means a try, a try would be just to push this to the next level where everything had an even exponent. And that's exactly what we did on this step right here. You can see, this was three to the first, I made it three to the second and an even exponent. This was five to the first, I made it five to the second and an even exponent. And finally, I, I turned the three into a four. That has to happen to satisfy condition one, all right? So we know that we've satisfied condition one and condition three so far, right? But let's take a look here. This Again, this is kind of just a conjecture based on what we know, an educated conjecture. But notice here that if you take this two, you take this two and increment it by one, you get three. You take this two and increment it by one, you get three. Take this four and increment it by one, you get uh, five. That would be nine uh, nine times five, which is 45 divisors. which, wow, it worked, okay? So that's the only way I know how to do it. Now, I think that is the smallest number with that property. I don't see how you could have anything. Uh, uh, well, actually, that may not be. Well, it would have to be because of the 51, 45. I was thinking if you knocked this down, uh, if you knocked it down to a lower value, you know what I mean? But if you knocked it down to lower primes, but these are the two, the, we could use two, three, and five, I guess, right? But in any event, 51, 45 wouldn't be a divisor of that number, right? Or it may not. But anyway, I'm pretty sure this is the only number. I'm not going to swear to it, but I think this is the unique number, whatever it is. Um, I think it's a little bit more than half a million. But, but anyway, hope you guys enjoyed that. Thanks.